Previously, we'd identified a cluster of flowers and removed the male parts from three of them and then protected these with a muslin bag so that pollinated insects couldn't access them. We've left it a few days and now those flowers have opened and they're ready to be pollinated. So the first thing to do is to go and find the male parent pollen. This is the young Spartan tree we're using as the male parent. And here's the cluster of flowers we protected from pollinated insects that are going to provide the pollen to use in the cross with discovery. So I'll remove the bag and take a look. It has to be fairly gentle with handling these flowers in case you pull them off. As you can see, some of the flowers haven't opened, that's fine. They can be used for future crosses. Others might have matured too far, such that the anthers have completely dried out and don't have any pollen grains on their surface. This is where a hand lens is quite useful. A little times 10 lens can be used just to inspect the surface of the anthers and see if there are any clumps of pollen grain visible. On this flower we've got several of the anthers that have split and released their pollen grains. I'll probably take that one off. It's a good idea to transport the flowers we're going to use to provide the pollen in a little container. Okay, so we've returned to the discovery tree that we're using as the female parent. And here's the flowering cluster that we'd selected and removed the stamens or the anthers and three flowers that we're actually going to use the the cross. So the first thing to do is to carefully and gently remove the little muslin bag that we've been using to protect these flowers against any natural pollination by bees or other insects. And it should reveal three flowers that have opened and at least one of which may well be in optimum condition to receive pollen from our donor variety, Spartan. The actual hand pollination procedure I use is very simple. I pick out one of the flowers that I've just recently removed from the Spartan variety with a, a tweezers and then I tend to hold it between finger and thumb and I look for the anthers that are particularly obviously covered in pollen. As you can see they tend to be a little bit rusty, rusty brown as opposed to pure yellow and smooth. So the rusty crinkly brown looking ones are the ones that I know from inspection have pollen on and I just brush them against the tips of the female part. And I tend to use one flower, provided there's plenty of pollen on it, to pollinate the three. And I go around again and again. So my feeling is that by hand pollinating three flowers on a cluster, each of the flowers being at a slightly different stage of development, you increase the chances that at least one of them will be at its most receptive state. Just be quite careful that your fingers are clean. If you're doing a lot of crosses in one day, you really need to wash your hands, preferably between each cross or else you may well be carrying pollen from varieties that you don't actually 
want to use in a given cross. Next thing is to recover the pollinated flowers with a muslin bag and this is to prevent any pollinating insects visiting these flowers and depositing pollen of unwanted varieties and actually leading to pollination of these flowers with varieties that you haven't chosen. In other words, you're wanting to protect the integrity of your cross. A week or two after the last of the blossom has fallen and it's time to revisit the trees and see whether any of the hand pollinated flowers have been successfully fertilized and are now developing into young fruits. And one carefully does the bead tie and then gently removes the muslin bag. And in this case, it looks as if two out of three hand pollinated flowers have been successfully fertilized and are now developing into young fruits. There are occasions where you remove the muslin bag and find there are no developing fruits, in which case the pollination and all the fertilization was unsuccessful. But more often than not, you find that you have at least one developing apple as a result of your efforts. Later in the season, once the apples have expanded to maybe their three quarters of their size, I'll actually mark them with a cross number with an indelible pen. But in the meantime, I'll retie the beads around the base cross so that I can find these again without too much difficulty. There we are. That's success.